Hi folks, and welcome back to The Plot. Not having a good one, to be honest. It's been a really tough week. I've barely been up the allotment. I think I came up Monday and it's now Saturday. Now, the reason I make this kind of video that isn't as positive as the usual one is never, you know, out of a... I'm not looking for sympathy. I never intend it to come across as a woe is me type thing. Sometimes it does and I do the edit and I think, oh no, I didn't mean this. The reason that I do this mainly is so that people understand that it's very normal to have ups and downs on your allotments and it's fine you just need to accept it i've mostly just been very busy very stressed this week and i've not really had the time and i'm just up here quickly today i don't don't really want to be here one of those i'm up here quickly to deliver a load of stuff because <laughs> the house is just full of stuff and uh, I, I promised Jess I basically load a load of stuff into the boot so at the back here we've got a few bags of compost and plenty more manure mulch to do a few beds it's also something very exciting in the front seat but I did want to mention the the other reason that I do this kind of video that isn't quite as chirpy is because more often than not it turns into a little bit of a therapy session and just getting it out and getting it off my chest and being honest about it, it does make me feel a little bit better which is um unusual there's lots to update you on as well though it's quite exciting coming down when you've not been here for a while there's lots to look at but first i'm going to get lugging because like i said i've not got too long and i think the heavens are about to open <laughs> so i'm going to get that boot emptied i'll show you what's in the front seat and then we'll do a few little updates look i feel better already you can hear it you know oh, it does start to lift sometimes if you can drag yourself up to the allotment but when you don't have the energy sometimes you do not have the energy and i know plenty of times i've come up here and it hasn't cheered me up you know i kind of know now when it is and when it's not going to cheer me up okay so car is empty polytunnel is full our oh, fresh compost and manure let me show you what's in here First thing, not particularly exciting, well, depending on your, you know, tastes in life. Lots of shredded cardboard and paper for the hot bin. Oh, there's something to show you in there too. And the other thing, which is actually proper exciting. Oh, it's warm in here today. I have been sent a care package from Autopots. I used these last year and it was just fantastic. If you saw my chilies growing in these, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Some more fertilizer on there, which can go straight in the fertilizer shelf, because yes, I have a fertilizer shelf now, if you can believe it. And basically what this is, is an extension kit. That is also a chocolate bar wrapper. Just hide that. And I'll set this up with some dedicated time on the video, but I just wanted to show you. Very, very exciting. This is the other thing, which is perfect timing, but basically they sell these pot dividers so you can turn one auto pot into four smaller pots for my chili peppers. I think this is going to be perfect. I think it works out at around three litres for each of the quarters. So I think that's going to be fantastic. Let's go through all the positives because there are, there are positives and it's going to lift my spirits a little bit. I mean, one good thing, all of the chili peppers still alive and kicking, but definitely not thriving. I just did an indoor update and I was showing the ones at home and I was describing, which are, you know, they have their own problems, but these guys at the allotment in the greenhouse, no movement whatsoever. Absolutely no new growth since I put these on. Maybe some very slow growth that I've not noticed. They are starting to flower as well. I think for these guys, a sign of stress. These are in the same pots as the ones that I showed indoors and the ones indoors, two times the size of these. So the flowering won't be from pot boundness or pot restriction, it's probably from stress. They are, have as well, one of the varieties, this is my Thunder Mountain Longhorn, has got some spiraling leaves. Can you see those? The actual leaf is spiraling around. And that is, I think, the same as tomatoes, going to be a sign of those big temperature swings. So it's probably getting quite warm in here when there's a spell of sun, but then the very cold nights are sending the plant a little bit haywire. So I, th I still think the, the right thing to do was to keep all of them at home, even though they are <laughs> They have their issues. Go and have a look at that last video if you want to see them. There is some weirdness in front of me though on the shelf. We'll look at that. But first, oh, another good news thing. Look at this, the magic dibber, maybe. I'm going to try this out. This is what has come from the <laughs> dibber debate videos where I was saying I was having real trouble um, with the container wise modules and getting the right dibbing for my soil. So this is perfectly shaped. Now, I apologize in advance, okay? I, I deliberately left behind a few onions. They're, they're not looking great. <laughs> 
whoops, but we can still use this to test. Basically, this dibber fits these just perfectly. Um, this is from Alex, one of my viewers. Uh, thank you so much to Alex for, for putting the time into designing this. He's done some other ones for his own container worth trays before, and he 3D pr prints his own um, chili pots and that kind of thing, which is really, really cool. And I think this is going to work perfectly. And we're going to work on, if it, if it works for my soil, work on getting something so I can put a handle on it and a bit of length so I haven't got to bend down. But he's made it so it fits this perfectly. But then there's just a few mil extra. So obviously these can fit in perfectly. If it was, if it was smaller than the cells or the same size, then they wouldn't quite drop in, I don't think. So we'll try that out. But yes, grow update, I think, because there, there is some proper weirdness. I don't... <laughs> I don't know what is happening this year, honestly. So to start, it is worth me saying, I've not been up here this week. I've not watered properly. I did give them a good water on Monday and it looks like it's seen them through. We have some things doing well, like these lettuce, this red bowl salad lettuce, really looking nice and healthy. A lot of other stuff hasn't moved at all, like at all. Uh, the basil down here, this germinated a very long time ago. And I saw that and thought, ooh, is this a compost issue, like Tony's been saying? Is this a light issue? But I think if it was a light issue, they'd be getting leggy. First time I'm trying out these shelves, and light has been a bit of a concern. The beetroot going very slowly, but they are going, which is something. A lot of failed germination on the old seed pots back there. The curcubits, that's not how it's pronounced, is it? The, the, the courgettes and cucumbers and things that I sowed. We've got the first ones just starting to pop up. They look a little dry. That is good, but the weirdness is up here on the tomatoes. Now, there's a lot of purpling, which is a sign of those cold nights, I think. But you know the really weird thing? They're getting leggy. They, these guys are leggy, and they have been on the top shelf in full light. There, there is, I, this can only be the weather, because just down here I was looking, and I saw these first, where are they? Behind this dried out pot, tray with the beetroot, I saw this, a very leggy sunflower, and I thought, oh no, it's these shelves, they're not getting enough light. I saw that first, and I got a bit worried, and then I saw the tomatoes, and then I looked over at the sunflowers that I put in the other greenhouse, and I put a series of things in here just because I was a little bit worried about whether or not they were getting enough light, so I wanted to put them in here where they would be basically on the top shelf, getting full light, full sun, and look at this. It's got to just be the weather. We have had, you know, miserable grey days, lots of rain, but <laughs> I wouldn't expect legginess like that, you know, for something, you know, even with cloudy days, I would have thought they were getting more sun. So very slow growth across the board, some legginess. I'm leaning towards it just being the weather. I mean, it's, we're nearly into May. It's the end of April now, and I feel like things are just growing, like, you know, it's, it's March, middle of March or something like that. I know the weather has been, you know, pretty off this year, but I've seen plenty of other people having much more successful years. So it does make you start to worry a little bit, doesn't it? But I'm sure things will catch up, but interested to hear your experiences in the comments below if you're having slow years or not. I did just want to have a quick update of the beds. The first thing I noticed, I mean, no dig. It's just very difficult on these plots. All of the wood chip paths have been absolutely really churned up. I don't know how well it comes across on camera, actually. Let me get a bit closer. You can see this. Look, it's just gone over the bed. The badgers or the foxes have really been in here. <laughs> just, oh, it does make things difficult, and it means that you, you don't get a weed excluding mulch on here. What, what is interesting, I was talking about this on Potty Mouth the other day. This is probably a better bed to show you. Over here, we're just starting, actually, to get weed germination. And these have been really free and clear most of the spring so far. And I think this is a real indication that the ground is actually only just starting to warm up, which would once again kind of go in hand in hand with what we're seeing in the greenhouse with a lot of slow growth. This is quite cool as well. One, one reason that I do like to leave the weeds to go a little bit, just until you can see what you're going for. These are volunteer lettuce. There's a few little lettuce in there. These peas, I chucked a quick, like, plastic defense on them. Look at that mushroom, that's quite cool. These went out maybe a little bit too early, and it's a tricky balance striking, you know, the protection and the peas starting to grow into that. So I'll take that off very soon. 
Something's been having a nibble at some of them. I think there's like a weevil, like a pea weevil or beetle or, or something like that that does like to have a go. Things are definitely looking up in the polytunnel, but oh, look down here. I don't want this to turn into a tour. I haven't got time. But look, another snake's head fritillary. It's popped up, which is just fantastic. Love that. And the new Lord Lambourne apple tree is full of blossom as well, which is really lovely to see. Now in the polytunnel, there's some shaking and moving and some things going on. <laughs> There's a giant pit <laughs> in here. This is where the hot bin was, or the, not the hot bin, the hot bed. I always get those mixed up. This was my attempt at a hot bed, and it was a monumental failure. <laughs> well, I basically, I was up here Monday. I was kind of looking for something to do, and I cast my eyes upon it and thought, yeah, it's time to move all of this raw manure to create the space. I didn't want it to suddenly get round to, oh god, the tomatoes and the chilies need to go out in the polytunnel and I need to dig all this stuff out and do a load of prep. And basically what I've done is probably dug out a good kind of 70% of the manure. I've left a lot in there because it'll still be good for the soil. Maybe only dug out around 60% actually. But I have moved the cold frame outside, which I'll show you. And I'm, I, I think I need to, to come up with something for this problem. We've got a few g bits of germination on the peas, but the problem I wanted to show you, look at this. What the heck? Some of my kale has bolted in this little seed tray. Once again, I mean, very slow movement on the brassicas. A bit disappointing, a bit of a question mark over that if it's just the weather or, or what. Maybe it is something going on with the compost. I'm, I'm seeing Tony. Tony has really not had a good time with Silver Grow and it, it has cast a little bit of doubt. A lot of, I've seen a few comments saying that the batches aren't so great this year. Ian from Grown Local has had problems too. I saw Charles Dowding had something to say about it as well. So these things, they give you a little bit of pause for concern, but some great germination in here. But um, yeah, I do think getting a cold frame or something that I can basically, a little nursery that I can protect from the birds and the, the cabbage whites for brassicas would be quite good because I might need to re-sow a lot of these, to be honest. Meanwhile though, in the ground, everything is thriving. Some really, really healthy looking stuff over here. This rocket has kind of grown exponentially since I was last here, not too much flea beetle damage. I've had a, two harvests of radish already and some absolute beasts in here ready to harvest now. I think they've enjoyed as I've thinned out. These lettuce definitely need a thinning out, but really starting to put on some good growth. The spuds looking oh, really good, actually. This is putting a little pep in my step. Look at these ones, turning into a little forest already. The leeks looking okay. I was worried these were gonna start bolting. They've not really fattened up too much. The <laughs> I have been taking a few spring greens from these. We're slowly going to harvest and get rid of all these bolting cabbages. A little bit of a failed experiment, but putting down a little bit of a mulch as well to get something going on on the soil with a few of the really older, harder leaves. Very unusual to have the spotty germination on the peas. I think I might have slightly underwatered these and gave a little bit more water up here. So I think this is just user error. Whereas last time we had really good germination. The sweet peas are definitely looking anemic. These are quite small cells for them. A little bit of uh, just kind of looking a bit pathetic, to be honest. So these guys probably almost definitely need a feed. Might give them a liquid feed now. But let me show you outside. Well, there is one triumph. There is one thing that I am extremely proud of. Uh, and <laughs> just, <laughs> yes, really, really proud of. Ah, can't wait to show you. It is at the end though. So one thing I have done and wanted to mention in these garlic tubs, these garlic are absolutely pathetic, but I have sowed a load of carrot seeds just to see, just to see whether or not we get a little bit of carrot germination. Ooh. Nope, that's a chili pepper. <laughs> There's a lot of volunteer chili peppers in this compost. Bit of grass, get out. Yeah, carrots, no carrots. I was expecting carrots, that's a bit disappointing. But uh, yes, you can see this is where a lot of the hotbed material has gone. It's gone a few different places, but a lot has gone on to this bed. One other thing I did with some of the surplus manure was actually put it in the hotbin. And to be honest, I'm not sure if this was a good idea or not, but it did have some warmth. And I, I don't think it's been the best idea. It is warm, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's about 30. It does feel very moist as well, I was expecting and hoping it was gonna start cooking away. There's so many planes today. I didn't mix it in very well and it does look very wet. So I imagine it's the amount of moisture that is causing the problem. Hopefully getting the browns in here. Nice thick layer. 
might help a little bit. I have been mixing this in. It got off to a really bad start, so just trying to sort of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about this. But I'm trying to do a bit of remedial action where I can to fix it. And it does have moments where it does get cooking. Whether or not the, the stuff that comes out is gonna be completely seed, you know, seed, uh, what's the word? What I'm saying is I'm hoping when it's all said and done and we empty that, the seeds that are in there have been cooked and when you spread the compost, you don't get all this tea germination or when you mix it into your, your own potting mix or whatever I'm gonna eventually do with it. And here is the little ramshackle frame I constructed. And I think with a little bit of polycarbonate over there, and it probably needs a, an angled bit of wood in the side or a bit of netting or something, this might just be a nice little slightly sheltered area for some of the seedlings that are gonna get too hot in the tunnel or the greenhouse. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I am enjoying being up here, but the idea of putting more jobs on the to-do list, it's not, not, no, it's not feeling good. <laughs> I don't want to think too much about the to-do list until I've got a bit of a, I don't know, just until I've done a bit more recovery, I guess. I think I just need a bit of a break. Um, and there is light at the end of the tunnel in terms of work and, and that kind of thing. No asparagus poking up just yet. I have, as you can see, just covered this with um, chicken wire to deter a little bit and the, the planks of wood are on there just to, to hold it down. But let's take a little look at Fort Fox. I can't see any carrots from here. Oh, I can see a bit of bindweed, that's good. Let's get you the angle. <laughs> Shooting through the security fencing. Oh dear, yeah, I can't see any carrots. Oh, maybe there is just one, one or two. Oh, this line might actually have some. Is there any in the big ones in here? Maybe a couple, but it could also just be weeds. Now this line, that looks like it might be carrots. Have we done it? Have we finally got some carrot germination? Oh, I'll be amazed if we do. The onions are not looking too hot, to be honest. Um, a lot of yellowing going on there. Mm, not great. I'm hoping they're just adjusting to life on, on the outside of the polytunnel and they will start to pick up. Yeah, fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed. Not encouraging. Talking about no dig failures, this one, this was looking so nice. Really good manure mulch on here. And if I don't protect it, it just gets completely churned up. Looks like they've actually gone under the bed there. <laughs> it's just, ah, uh, you know, just what can you do? What can you do? It's not worth getting too stressed out over. You know, I don't want to end up having to chicken wire every single bed every time I want to grow anything in there. And soon enough, these are going to be built up, raised up, and then you'd be chicken, put in chicken, then you'd be chicken pick, picking wire, <laughs> no. <laughs> then you would be putting chicken wire on the surface of the soil anyway, and then you get exactly the problem that I have on those peas where they start to grow into your cover. <sighs> so I just kind of treat that as a bit of a fact of life, you know, I mean, it does make no dig more difficult because they bring up all that, that topsoil instead of your compost or manure mulch, but that's life, isn't it? That's just life. But the final thing, the thing that I am very, very pleased to finally show you, this line of gutter peas has a support. Look at this. I don't know how well it comes across on camera actually, but I have put up the Harrod Horticultural bean and pea netting and the scaffolding frame. And if I do say so myself, I am really, really happy with this. We've got like some nice actual tension on here, just from these kind of bamboo canes, which are propped into the ground, which just give it that little bit of extra kind of horizontal tension. We've got it all tied in across the top and I'm really, really pleased. I did have to basically, I couldn't get any corner supports for the scaffolding in. So I did just end up hammering these in and they're probably only, well, they're not as tall as I would have liked, but it does mean they are super deep into the ground. I did pop a load of onions just in the back as well. Um, I know it looks very raw manure, but they're, they're, their roots are in contact with the soil, but everything has been in here digging. <laughs> and most of these shall probably perish, but hey ho, not the end of the world. I have pegged down the netting as well. So it's, it's got a few metal pegs just holding it in. And I'm hoping, I mean, once again, these guys haven't grown too much. When do, I can't remember when I did this. I'll, I'll put it on the screen when, when these were planted and when I completed the support structure. But it's been longer, long enough that I thought I would have had a little bit more growth on these. But the good thing is, touch wood, so far they haven't been dug out. And I think because I put this little bit of trellis down just to deter stuff. 
something else I completely forgot to show. I had a small celeriac harvest. Down here, there's this little, I mean, it's a patch of, they're kind of Spanish bluebells that I probably don't want to keep, but there's something else in here. I think it's gladioli as well. So I've just kind of let this go to see what happens. I probably, I want to do something up this end with the, the ground because it just needs a bit of formal, formalizing. This side of the polyton, I kind of kept it hidden away, not showing it off too much. But um, there were in there some celeriac, and they were pathetic. <laughs> they were like, like golf ball sized, a couple of um, slightly bigger ones. But um, yeah, not, not, nothing to write home about, but I do need to cook them. I haven't done anything with them yet. A little bit nervous, don't know what you do with celeriac. I did also have a nice harvest of rhubarb and radish, so it has started, the harvesting is starting, which is a nice feeling. I would probably feel a little bit better if I'd come up. Everything would really explode it into life. Everything is growing a little bit weird and a little bit slow. Well, not everything, that's the thing. Some things, completely fine. I, it's just a few, well, it's the majority of things which just aren't growing. I don't know, I don't know why, I can't figure it out. I don't know what it is. But the fact that it's happening in both greenhouses, in all light conditions, the things that are doing well are in the ground. So maybe it is a, Maybe it is a compost thing. I do have some other composts, I think I've mentioned this already, to do trials with, so we'll see. When I finally get that on the go, um, I just, there's a lot, to, uh, I just don't have much energy. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just, um, you know, sometimes the allotment falls by the wayside a little bit. I will probably, hopefully, have a bit more energy tomorrow on Sunday and come up and do a little bit. But if the channel goes a little bit quiet for a little while, you know this is why. I might wake up tomorrow and suddenly be full of the joys of spring and full of energy. I, I never know what to expect when this happens, but um, if it's happening to you, don't worry. You'll perk up soon enough and the jobs will get done. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I need to make a move on. And I think I've covered everything I wanted to. I'm sure I have forgotten lots, but hopefully I will see you again in the next one. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper Tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks and Garden, Andrew, Sarah, Angela, Dorcasaur, and Louise. <laughs>